Inferno mode in the Calamity mod isn't just a walk in the park. It's more like crawling through a minefield with everyone throwing pies at you. But you know what? I thought to myself, why not just step on every mine? So let's play with one health. Rules, you bet. Our health ceiling is 1. 1 measly hit point. We can use any quality of life mods as long as they don't gift wrap any combat advantages for us. So no cheaty extra accessories or hey look at me, I'm OP items. Alright, let's see how many ways I can almost not die. I booted up the world and surprise, I'm at 1 health. It's like waking up and realizing you've overslept for 3 hours. Panic mode engaged. I started this world like any Terraria world, whacking trees and turning my new doomed estate. To the left, a desert with some ominous looking crimson. Eh, we'll leave that for later. To the right, jackpot. A starter cave just asking for me to loot it. But remember kids, always check your surroundings or you might get ambushed by a, I don't know, a terrifying red slime. Post respawn, I decided to embrace my inner architect and went with some instant houses. Moving further right, I bumped into a second desert with a desert pyramid. Oh, and I found this cool flying carpet. Aladdin will be jealous. After some diplomacy, I relieved the locals of their precious belongings, including a decent spear and a summoning weapon. Upgrades, people. Back to the crimson I am. And guess what? I had a prickly encounter with some thorn bushes. But good news, I found the rover drive. It's like a personal little bubble that can tank about 20 damage. It's great for non-lethal pebbles or mild breezes, but it's not so much good for the monsters that can basically look at you and you pop. I dove back into the underground crimson and Newton decided to give me a physics lesson. Everybody hurts, okay? Third time's the charm, right? I stumbled across the crimson effigy. It's supposed to give you power by sacrificing your max health. I'm already living on the edge with one health, so what could possibly go wrong? Huh. Well, apparently I've reached undead status. Still, everything one-shots me, so not a real difference, just a more spooky complexion. Lastly, I smashed a few crimson hearts, and voila! I picked up an unregistered firearm. Time to start a revolution, or, you know, try not to shoot myself with it. Continuing our adventures in existential crisis land, I built some houses. You could call it my one health homeless haven. And my journey to the right? Well, let's just say I went so right, I'd make the Republican Party blush. Stumble upon this narrow underground passage? Could it be the legendary enchanted sword shrine? Nope, just a temple with a trinket of chi. Damage reduction and health regeneration? What a treat! Totally the lifesaver I need with my whopping one health. Off to the ocean I want, hoping to befriend the angler and use fishing as a survival tactic. But before I could say, here fishy fishy, I get introduced to the sharp end of a sea urchin. On the brighter side, I did couple together enough scraps to fashion the Wolfram armor set. And boy, does it have an Iron Man but made in a garage vibe. Laser weapons included, pew pew. After crafting some Hermes boots for that snazzy speed, I went spelunking for loot, only to get darted. Not my proudest moment, at least scored some amethyst from a fancy hook. I would wonder what happens when you mess with a pig with enough health to rival a tank? Took a detour skyward and went on a cloud mining spree. Cloud in a bottle? Chuck. Now, the plan was to kick the desert skirt Sandy behind first, but as dusk approached I thought, why not invite the Eye of Cthulhu for some midnight tea instead? But a uh, slight oversight, my galaxy brain forgot to turn on inferno mode. Go to thought that installing doesn't equal enabling. Oops. After rectifying my not-so-genius move, the true challenge began. The Eye of Cthulhu, Infernum style. Here's the thing. Fighting with my little unregistered boomstick? Not the best idea. Yes, I'm aware of those optimal class setups, but hey, predictability is news to us, so we're going in guns blazing. First phase, dodge, bait, repeat. Phase 2, this eye's got moves. It circles, it dashes, and even makes it rain teeth. My measly cloud in a bottle wasn't even cutting in, so I upgraded to fleshling wings and a sandstorm in a bottle. My rover drive as useful as a chocolate teapot. And boy, did I face plan. A lot. But here's the kicker. I wouldn't be narrating this if I hadn't showed that eyeball who's boss, right? Well, 
one boss bites the dust, but my masochistic journey is just warming up. Oh, and get this, the boss dropped not one, not two, but five treasure bags. Did I go overboard with those mods? Maybe just a little, but we'll figure that out later. A shiny shield of Cthulhu. It lets me ram into foes, and if done right, I can channel my inner bullfighter. Or not. I got my hands in a tendon bow too. Always good to have options. So what's next? Well naturally, I jumped right into the next boss fight. A bit of prep, just a handful of jester arrows, and voila! It was Desert Scourge Showdown time. My date with the Desert Scourge? Let's just call it an enlightening education in humility. If the Eye of Cthulhu was like an annoying fly that you just can't swat away, the Desert Scourge was the fly's meaner, bulkier cousin who's done some serious time at the gym. This monstrous worm with its weird patterns seemed to think I was a side dish in its desert buffet. The Scourge isn't just about dodging, it's like dancing the cha-cha while juggling flaming swords on a tightrope over a pit of lava. Its moves? Devious. Sandbolt summoned from both screen edges transforming the desert into a lethal pinball machine with me as the unwitting ball. And just when you think, hey, I've got the hang of this, it goes berserk, chasing you like you owe it money. The scenery didn't help either. The sweeping dunes and shimmering heat might sound romantic in a poem, but in practice, it's an arena where every grain of sand feels like it's out to get you. Every jump, dash, and dodge had to be meticulously calculated or else I'd end up as worm food. Several bouts later, my respect for this boss skyrocketed. Not because of its strength, or its agility, but its uncanny ability to teach humility. They say skill beats luck, but you know what beats skill? Determination. The Desert Scourge didn't last long, but make no mistake, this was no fairy tale ending, it's just another chapter in my 1 HP against the world saga. The desert might have been conquered, but there are many more terrains waiting to test my mettle. After showing that worm who's boss, I dove into crafting the Victide armor for some aqua acrobatics and went deep, deep down into the sunken sea, or as I like to call it, the underwater maze of impending doom. Why you ask? For a giant clam, of course. Inside this behemoth shell is the Sea King, held captive like the world's most disgruntled pearl. And this guy? is my ticket to some sweet firepower, but to get to him, I had to go spelunking through clam guts. Fun times. Let's be real though, this watery wonderland? A nightmare in stilettos to fight in. I'm talking running into walls, ambushes, and who knows, probably trench foot. After a few totally planned respawns, I thought, hmm, maybe black market undersea weapons aren't for me. Shift to plans! Enter the Opal Striker. The gun with meteorite sass. Now, meteorites are a fickle bunch. You break a crimson heart and then wait for the skies to give you a fiery rock. But after a love affair with some crimson hearts and a 50% success rate on my side, the universe just went, not today, champ. I searched high, I searched low, but my world was a meteorite freeze zone. <sighs> Weapons are overrated anyway, right? So I went with plan C, fungicide. And the supplier, Krabulon, a giant crab with a funness for fungi and a vendetta against me. A slight issue, my weaponry was, well, modest. But who cares about optimal setups, not this guy. I found the perfect mushy battleground, looking like a hippie's dream, and set the stage for our dance. And no surprises here, Krabulon is the worst kind of dance partner. His first act, hop and skip while generally gifting spores every few beats. Act 2, a ballet of chaos. Krabulon deploys his pesky crab shrooms. Think of them as little wingmen that you never asked for, except they're out to get you. And if that wasn't enough, Krabulon has a trick up his crabby sleeve. Mushroom pillars. Picture it, you're trapped, dancing between columns, dodging mushroom fire from above, inhaling spore gas, and all the while, Krabulon's coming to get you. Full throttle. Midway ahead to entertain a goblin army. They were a cakewalk. Mostly. 
With them out of the way, I discovered the Goblin Tinkerer, who hooked me up with some lightning boots and a souped up sandstorm in a balloon. And just to keep things spicy, I opted for a shark tooth necklace, because who doesn't want teeth around their neck? I invested in a mini shark and regretted it instantly. But with some fancy flesh rounds, which I then swapped for acceleration rounds, my little pea shooter became a force to be reckoned with. Armed to the teeth and high on determination, Crabulon's days were numbered. After conquering Crabulon, I secured my prize. Finally, the fungicide. At face value, it's a respectable weapon with decent damage. However, when you swap out those acceleration rounds for musket balls, magic happens. Its bullets morph into spore clouds, which in turn disintegrate into homing spores on impact, delivering a good punch. A triumph to be sure, but let me tell you, this victory is merely the tip of the iceberg in my odyssey of pain. From spore-infused weapons to crep crushing madness, this journey has been intense. Let's put this in perspective. I plunged 12 hours of gameplay, wrestling with just three bosses. Then I sat through those same 12 hours to distill it into this one video you've just watched. Honestly, crafting this video might be a more masochistic endeavor than just the challenge itself. So if you appreciate my blend of gaming dedication and rapidly declining sanity, please hit the subscribe button, as it would mean one less hour of me sobbing into my keyboard tonight. And brace yourself, there are more episodes on the horizon, because apparently I love suffering for your entertainment. Until next time!